of the Paradigm Shift, episode 59. We got a big special treat today, and I couldn't be more excited. Uh, I can't wait for our guest. How's everybody doing? Happy Saturday. Big day if I see you. We had some technical difficulties. No big deal. Uh, bring it on my partner in crime, the articulate alligator, the quantum quail, uh, the sex octopus right now. Let's do this. Yeah. Bang. I want to know how everybody's feeling. Drop your current state in the chat if you'd be so kind. And let's get nuts. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. <laughs> we got too much energy for, for Instagram, man. We, we knocked ourselves off energetically. That's right. How you doing? Amazing. Thank you so much for moving this up 15 minutes for me. I want to thank everybody for joining us and uh, looking forward to this episode. I may go mobile for the second half, but I want to make sure I get in the consistent behavior to help other people and be of service. That's it. Absolutely. I'm excited for our guest. I'm a big fan. Uh, but right now, early, I'm excited to see your handsome face, which begs the question, how many handsome sandwiches for breakfast? I haven't had one yet because we moved it up 15 minutes, but this is without handsome sandwiches. My goodness, could you imagine that? You really are sex up. <laughs> Let's get started. You ready for me? I am ready for you. Okay. Uh, looking at your content this week, as I always do, as everybody should, I saw something that you mentioned, which I found interesting because I haven't heard it articulated like that before. You said something along the lines of this, Dave angle towards what you want instead of directly towards what you want. I thought that was pretty cool. What did you mean by that? Yeah, I think too many people think they know what they don't know. And they're, you know, not realizing that our life's about killing off the limitations. So if you, you know, pre prescribe a certain outcome, instead of aiming at that outcome and angling towards the outcome. And when I say angling towards the outcome, that when we are aiming towards our midterm and long-term objectives. And I, I wanna state one thing about objectives. The farther out uh, outcome, an objective, a goal, a milestone is, the more unrealistic it should be. So your objectives for today should be extremely realistic. The farther you move out from there, it should get less and less realistic and allow yourself to understand two things. You don't know what you don't know, and two, you're limiting yourself. But what we want to do is utilize a trajectory or an aiming system to angle towards what we want, be open to know that we're being protected and promoted to something better, each day having very realistic objectives while we try to kill off those limitations that create resistance, void shortages, and obstacles for ourselves with our mindset, our heart set, and our handset. Could you be on any more fire this morning? Riddle me that. I, I, amazing. So but I'm, I'm so excited, man. I, I got uh, my wife over here. She either, I, I'm going to either have to go mobile with her when we leave in 10 minutes or I'll meet her there. Okay. I'm <laughs> done right now. Let's get this rock and roll. Let's make it, man. Let's do this. What do you got going on this weekend, Dave? Well, it's Mother's Day. So that's my priority is my wife and my mom. And uh, that's why I had to move this up. We're meeting Cynthia Kersey, the founder of the Unstoppable Foundation. There she is. Hey, Andrea, how you doing? I'm really, really good. Oh, my goodness. It's so nice to speak with you both in real life. In uh, real life. Yeah, I definitely don't have the coolest accent on here anymore. Are you still in the Big Apple? I am. I'm actually um, in my hotel room uh, looking out. I can see the ball on the top of Times Square, which may not mean anything to you, but <laughs> really exciting to me. Oh, that's awesome. Well, well thank you for joining us. At, at first things first, congratulations on the U.S. book launch. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, it's so incredible, the fact that I'm actually here. Oh, and you got the book. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. We posted it to you from the UK. And we just had our fingers, toes and eyes crossed that it would actually make it to you. It's, it's so incredible. And, and just listening to what you guys were talking about earlier as well, it made so much sense to me. Um, can I jump straight in and just explain why? Please. Yeah. Oh, well, it made so much sense to me because I was literally listening and, and nodding because, you know, I'm here in New York uh, uh, because I've got the U.S. launch of my fourth book. I, I can't believe it was my, my fourth book. And while you were talking, it was just taking me back to when I was 24, which you know, it's not that long ago. Um, it was like two weeks. I was, it was just, you know, when I was 24. So, oh, my gosh, it was nearly 25 years ago. And um, I moved to London with literally everything I owned in the backseat of my car, slept on floors, 
lived in a bedsit that is that was smaller than the bathroom I got ready in this morning uh, for you guys. And my dream was to be a writer. It was to be a writer and to just meet really interesting people and interview them and sort of pass on their story. That that was it. I had no contacts in the business. I just got in my car, and drove to London, and. What really resonated with what you were talking about was I had a huge audacious goal. It was, it was huge. It was ridiculous. But every day I did something that took me closer and closer towards it. What's so funny is looking back now as a 50 something year old woman is I didn't realize that I was doing all the right things. I was just doing what came really naturally to me was this is this thing that I really want. Right. What can I do about it? Okay. That's a no. I'll put that to one side. Okay. That's another no. And this whole idea of aiming for something so specific actually really restricts you because then if you don't get that, then you feel like you fail. But actually, if you just have this big, bold, someday dream but take steps towards it. I ended up working as a live television broadcaster on national daytime TV. I was the, the, the British host of um, the equivalent of The View in, in Britain. And I kept feeling like I was in the wrong job because it wasn't what my big goal was. And so, but what's great is it's taken me full circle and now I'm here. So it all works. You know, even if you go like this, even if you sort of ebb and flow, it all works. Yeah, and you have to be open, right, for some of the pivots and so forth. And I couldn't help but notice the gigantic grin on Big Dave's face. Would you still get you Grinch? Well, I think there's one additive that I found too. When you have a very specific outcome, um, you put your emotions, you tie your emotions to that outcome. and. Anytime you put emotions on an outcome, now you're utilizing time as an aspect. And so if you say to yourself, I'm going to be so happy when I write my fourth book, I'm going to, it's going to be, I mean, every, all my emotions are tied to that outcome. The minute you say it and tie your emotions, every second that ticks by creates resistance because you're running out of time. And so, you know, when you do that, so what I love to do is this idea of aiming or utilizing a trajectory and then focusing in on today, uh, understanding that the only limitation of time is each day. Otherwise, it's just the relativity of time that we're applying to our midterm and long-term objectives in life. So we want to utilize and maximize 24 hours a day, 1,440 minutes a day in the man-made construct of time. How productive are we going to be today towards that aim, how accessible to others and how are we accessing and receiving ourselves? And most importantly, how gracious are we finding the light, the love and the lessons with that time, utilizing the need for feed instead of the need to bleed, which is where we want to focus our attention and intention. Bye. You guys got nuggets today. Is, <laughs> is, this is a lot. I, I might as well just go. That was so good. I can't follow up on that. I might as well just go. <laughs> It'll, it'll have another layup for you. Come on, my, uh, Craigie Poo. All right, no problem. Uh, looking at Andrea's content, because I'm a fan, and I'm excited to dive into your book. Uh, I just got it. And, and one of the things that you talk about um, often is, is to stop canceling on yourself. And I thought that was really deep and profound. Maybe you could elaborate a little bit about that for the audience. Well, this is, this is a lesson that I learned fairly late on in life. And, you know, as as people who follow me and I, I guess your followers won't know so much about me is that uh 18 months ago i totally pivoted career-wise i walked away from a you know a 25 year job working on national television to to follow my heart and my passion and and working on this girl is on fire which is a my uh female personal growth business that i work on and what I realized I was doing was when you, when you go all in on working on your passions, you do the opposite of what you tell everyone else to do. You work 18 hours a day, you think of nothing else, you literally, your nose to the grindstone, you just, you just eat whatever you can, you grab a bit of sleep whenever you can. And then one day I kind of looked up and realized, what am I doing? I'm literally doing the opposite of what I tell everybody to do. And so, what I've then been working on is, right, okay, come on, let's strip it right, right, right back. Ring fence your time. Stop canceling on you. And what I mean by that is, I fill my diary with so many things that, will this take me closer to my goal? Yes, it will. So I'll say yes to that. If it won't, no. But what I found I was doing was anything that was in my diary that was just for me in terms of 
relaxing or just having a bit of a breather and a little bit of space to myself. I'd be like, no, that's a gap. I can fill that. And I was constantly canceling on myself. So it was this whole idea of it, it, like putting brakes on a car and thinking, right, no. I've put it in the shared diary that we all has a, have as a family because we do it all on our mobile. And if it says Andrea time, don't ask me to move it. That's my time. And can I just say, it's so hard. It's really, really hard because it doesn't feel as important as all the other stuff. But you guys know this. You, you actually come up with some of your best ideas when you stop. When you're in and you're just going, 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 which I, I know I tend to do. Yes, I'm being, you know, uh, proactive and I'm moving forward. But um, there's a sort of a hamster wheel effect to it. And actually, when Nick hates this analogy, my husband, Nick, he's trying to be quiet sitting in the, in the other room because I'm doing this just now. He may appear in a Nick. second. Um, he's a golfer. So he hates it when I use this analogy because I say to him, all the interesting stuff happens in the long grass. It's really boring just sticking on the fairway. All the interesting stuff happens in long grass. He's like, stop saying that. No, you got to stay on the fairway. But for me, it's when you sort of go off into the rough a little bit, that's just when things get interesting. New ideas come in and you find new ways of overcoming difficulties. So we have very different, different ways of viewing golf. He's clearly better at it than me. That's such a good point. And also like Dave, I didn't discover CLS until the beginning of the pandemic and the lockdown started and I had no choice but to kind of just find myself grounded. And all of a sudden I started to have these great ideas and so forth. I know Dave, you're big on that too, right? Finding yourself grounded, stop, drop and roll. Yeah, I think, you know, moreover too, you can't be afraid of being a hypocrite if you're going to be a coach, teacher or a mentor. And, you know, I find myself, uh, as you know, Craig, since I do a little mentoring with you, I find myself telling myself as I coach, God, that's really a great idea, David. Too bad you don't do it. Um, <laughs> and the greatest thing I want to point out is, you know, to identify what you're doing to interfere with what you are, happy, healthy, wealthy, and worthy. Um, and instead of trying to get more healthy, get more happy, get more wealthy, get more worthy, let's figure out what you're doing to interfere with it. And I especially want to point out health because I spent, I'm older than, uh, both of you, obviously, but I spent the majority of my life telling people how important it is to be healthy, uh, that when you're healthy, you get as many wishes as you want. But if you're unhealthy, you only have one wish. And meanwhile, I wasn't taking care of my own health. And so to have non-negotiables that are aligned with the principles and lessons that you've learned is essential. But one other aspect as well is just forgiveness one of the most difficult things of writing books and speaking and coaching and all the things that we do to help other people, one of the most difficult things is to forgive ourselves for not being what we say we are or not being what we teach. And that's really helped me out to be able to say, okay, you know, one time's a mistake, two times a new habit. I don't want to create a new habit. Let me forgive myself for making a mistake. I'm going to go ahead and create a habit that I want. Wow. <laughs> I'm I'm mobile Meltzer now, so I apologize for the the shifty background. <laughs> that, that's okay. hey, Andrew, I see you smiling. I guess you like that one too. I I loved it because I think as well what what crossed my mind was as well. Don't compare yourself to not only what you're projecting when you know we're working. You know this today we're we're working, so we're, we're presenting our best self and we're um, you know the the things that we put out on social media to do with our business and this sort of thing. But I think. Don't, don't even compare yourself to what you're putting out to the world, but also don't compare yourself to what you see everyone else doing. So for example, um, so we've had a really busy schedule obviously since we've been here in New York. It's been, it's been great. We've brought the kids. So there's six of us here. So it's full on. So we're trying to obviously merge family time with you know, work time. And yesterday I had to walk away from everybody. I just come back to the hotel room and just lay down and I just slept, slept and slept and slept. And then I, I bought a movie in the, in the hotel room and I sat and watched that and I slept some more. Now, that may sound like laziness. You know, oh my God, she went, she went back and she just lay down and she could have been smashing it and be out there. But I really don't care because it was what I needed at the time was to just stop for a minute because otherwise I know myself. So what I would say to, to add on to that is, um, no, 
Do thine own self be true. Do uh, it. Oh. Dave, you about to say something? You sex pants? Yeah, well, I was just going to say, it's so simple life if you just listen to Shakespeare and Einstein. So I think if we just focus in on to thine own self be true, and then a lot, as well as the stage theory that, you know, the whole world is your stage now. Uh, these two lessons of Shakespeare uh, have driven me uh, professionally and personally. Uh, but then, of course, Einstein uh, with relativity and the rule of 72. I think those four lessons that we've learned from historical greats that teach us about our human nature and how to utilize human nature and behavior uh, as an aggregate and accelerant to what we want, who we can help, and how happy we can be. Uh, we don't have to make things complex. Uh, there's many people out there that are reinterpreting and recommunicating these basic lessons, but I know uh, some of us are more familiar with Shakespeare than others, but to thine own self be true may be one of the greatest lessons of all time. This is, this is awesome. Straight up gold. Uh, I, I know it's Saturday and we both got a lot. We'll land the plane with this one. Uh, one thing I saw you talk about recently, Andrew, which really hit home to me, I think is really powerful. This is loving yourself is taking your power back. And I think this is something that, that resonates particularly with women, but not exclusively so. And the reason for that is, I think, as, as little girls, you know, we're, we're kind of raised to, to be good and to be quiet, to be neat and to be tidy and to serve. It's, it's, it's a very, very natural thing. Um, you know, be a good girl and tidy your room and help your mum and, and, and this sort of thing. Um, but I think taking your, your power back is something that women struggle with a little bit in terms of it, that it, maybe it's especially British women. You don't want to seem rude. You don't want to say no. You don't let anybody down. And I know for me, that was, it was a huge shift because I was, you know, I'm really blessed to have, I have a lovely parents and a lovely family, but I was a very, very good girl. So for me, it was always to, to, to please and to do what other people wanted me to do to make their lives easier. And it was quite a wrench to learn how to say, actually, do you know what? I, do, I don't want to do that. All right. Thank you very much. But, but no. Um, and I realized that taking your power back actually can be a very quiet thing. You know, in, in the UK, uh, I'm known as, you know, Andrew McLean, who runs the female empowerment site, this girl is on fire. And sometimes there's a bit of me that goes, ooh, because to me, female empowerment sounds like it's something kind of loud and shouty with big shoulder pads and sort of Alexis Carrington earrings. And it's not. It actually is something that's really quiet because your own sense of power is to be able to just stand for what you believe in. And you can do that really quietly. You don't have to shout. You know, my mum my always said, you know, empty vessels make the most noise. You don't have to make a lot of noise to be incredibly powerful. Kindness is powerful, love is powerful, and they don't necessarily make a lot of noise. So reclaiming your own power is something that when you sit quietly, that's when you figure out what your power is, and then you can work out how to reclaim it. I'm smiling because I know as soon as Dave heard the word kindness, forget about it. Look at his smile. Uh, it's, what I, it's what I live by, all the complexities, the setbacks, failures, mistakes. Uh, the promotion and protection, as I define it, is totally incorporated in the idea and concept of kindness. And I'm going to have to leave with this last, as you say, landing the plane for me and continue the conversation. But I have a saying, be kind to your future self, do good deeds. Uh, that's showing up, that's owning it, that's loving yourself. So I appreciate both of you. Thank you so much uh, for your adaptation and adaptability of moving uh, up the time and allowing me to leave early. I love you both. I look forward to reading the book. Thank you so much, both of you. Yeah. And Andrea, I had so much fun. Let's definitely do some more together. What's the best way for the audience to all support you? Buy the book. Uh, buy the book would be, would be great. It's, it's here. Um, we've actually got a special promotion on right now, which actually ends at the end of today, where if you go to Amazon, you can get it for under a dollar if you download the, um, uh, the downloadable version. It's under a dollar and under a pound. So if you head there right now, you can, you can get it at that price. For tomorrow, it goes back up to, uh, to the normal price. Or you can follow me. I'm on Andrea McLean 1 or 
at official TGIOF because somebody else had this girl is on fire. So we have to have a, a quiet, powerful little word with them. <laughs> fire is a big thing for me, and I love that that's the name of the app and, and part of your brand is this girl's on fire. Uh, it just resonates with me. Definitely can do some more stuff. I'd uh, love to have you on the CLS Experience podcast and, and just really build a friendship. How long are you in town for? I leave this afternoon. Literally, oh. my, my suitcase is packed behind me. We sort of squeezed this in really quickly because we, we really wanted to connect with you. But 100%, we will, we will do more uh, with each other, for sure. 100%. Audience, go grab the book, especially today. Thank you so much for joining us. I, I appreciate it. This was awesome. It was time really well spent. Uh, and, and I'm excited to read the book and build a friendship. Thank you. Me too. So lovely to connect with you. Yes. Have a good rest of the day and a safe flight. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Too much fun, guys. Hope you got a lot of nuggets out of that just the way I did. Uh, go sharpen the axe and, and grab Andrea's book. She's awesome. She's got a ton of wisdom, life experience, knowledge, and nuggets. Uh, if you guys aren't in the CLS texting community every day, priceless free gems, what are you waiting for? Text the number on the bottom of the screen, 917-634-3796. That was an awesome conversation. Uh, I just got back from a nice run in the rain. Uh, I'm feeling good. I see Jesse in the house, Big Dave. Uh, everybody's out today. Really special. Rachie, Alexandra, uh, fantastic stuff. Guys, have an unbelievable day. Celebrate Mother's Day, whatever that means to you. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. What's up, Carrie? Uh, the book title is You Just Need to Believe It. You dig? Uh, so there's that. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, and happy Mother's Day to my beautiful, amazing mom, uh, Helene Siegel, who may or may not be on here right now. Mikey in the house. Uh, great call, guys. I love you all so much from the bottom of my heart. Have an unbelievable weekend.